What's up YouTube? Welcome to TWP Mechanics. We're going to be working on this 99 Sportster Petcock here. We're going to be basically getting rid of this diaphragm vacuum line setup and making it a straight through Petcock because this diaphragm in here is bad and it won't hold a vacuum anymore so now it's dumping fuel straight into the intake past the carburetor and that ain't good and a new one of these you can pick them up at Harley for 40 50 bucks but we're gonna bypass it call it good so first thing we're gonna need I'm gonna get some of this all right raise blade screwdriver that's about it what we're gonna do we're gonna take off the diaphragm and we're gonna take take the back end off pull out the diaphragm and get to this part this is the part we need right here okay hold on a minute all right now we got our screws out I'm gonna lay this down as you can see there's that diaphragm right there all right we got a spring diaphragm base right there so this is the part that we want all right what we need to do is we need to clean this up rough it up with some sandpaper just make it nice and clean hit it with some acetone clean it out and once we do that we'll start sticking that in there get it in there nice and tight okay so we've got the diaphragm out we just need these two parts here and here this one actually has this little hole down here that comes through there you're going to want to pack that little gap and that hole as much as you possibly can okay but remember we still need to put the diaphragm back in here so you don't want to make this all big and bulky right up in here that it can't let that diaphragm sit back down same thing with this we're going to fill that hole and we're going to pack the living hell out of the inside of this and make sure we get it real nice and tight all up in there I hit it with a wire brush to rough it up, clean it up, hit it with some brake cleaner, cleaned it out. So that works fine. You could use acetone sandpaper too. So this stuff here, real simple, real easy to use. Just a two-part mixture. Cut off a little bit. You don't need a lot. Cut off a little bit and you just knead it together till it's one color. And I'll get back with you in a second. Okay. So, if you can see, we packed that through it full. That little hole is now plugged. We got that all full in there. Same thing with this one. Packed it in there. I filled that little hole all the way to you start seeing it come up there. And then packed the bottom full. But you see, you don't want it to go over that lip. Alright, you want it to stay to where you can still get that diaphragm in there. Now, we're going to fill this one up some more making sure we really pack it down get it in there good okay we got that guy all full you want to make sure you get your edges nice and flat uh, make sure it's nice and smooth that's full let me ready to go we're going to top this off by putting a vacuum cap on there um, make to fully seal that in case any possibility of any fuel coming through that vacuum cap is going to be glued up on there and it will stop anything but you shouldn't have any issue with this now this stuff you only got about three to five minutes of working with before it hardens up I mean once them two pieces or components are kneaded together it turns in starts to heat up and it starts to harden and it'll harden within an hour to be rock solid so you want to move fast and just be careful with it. I mean, you might want to throw some gloves on. I didn't wear gloves. You can take it off a brake cleaner, acetone, whatever, get it off your fingers. But sometimes gloves help with this process. Now you can see that one's packed full there. Same thing. Flat edges. Packed it full. Um, I might even glue a little vacuum cap on the back of that one just for the shits of doing it but we'll see what happens 
Okay, so now if we can focus here, we got that rubber, that little cap on there. Now that thing is extremely tight on there. That's what you want to do. You want to get one that's just a little smaller than what you need and really squeeze it on there. But these are the thicker ones. These are the these are the really good ones. You don't want to do it with the little cheap ones. You want to go with these nice thick ones. You don't want to worry, worry about them fuckers cracking and ripping apart on you and shit. So that's what you want to do there. This one. We're going to do the same system. We'll take one of these, but we're going to cut it way down. And then we're actually going to glue it on there because it's such a little little nub to hold on to. We'll glue it on there and we'll have no issue with it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this red high temp silicone like that. And I want to take this. I'm gonna put it all inside of this boot. Just like that. Right? So then, okay, we ain't gonna use the red RTV. We're gonna use JB Weld. We're gonna mix a little bit of it, just a little tiny bit, get it in there, and then we'll place this on the little guy. And we'll let it cure. All this uh, we're gonna let it cure. I was gonna use the RTV, but I figured since we're already using JB Weld, we might as well continue using that. Plus, that JB Weld should adhere to the JB Weld in that little hole real good. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we got the two mixed up. All right, we're gonna put a little bit in this little cap here, and then we're gonna squeeze it on. All right, we got that little guy on. Now, you're going to get some seepage that comes out. A little bit of extra that blows out of there. You really want to clean those edges up. You don't want to get any of that JB Weld on them surfaces. That has to meet with this one or the back of this. You want all this shit to be super flush to each other with your gaskets. All right. Now, these are the gaskets of the diaphragms that came out of it. So, we're going to use an exacto knife, razor blade, whatever the hell you got, and really precisely cut around this little circle. And same thing with that one, cut around that little circle, or that little nub right there. Be very careful not to fuck up the edges of these gas or these diaphragms, because you're going to use these to seal this shit back together. Okay, as you can see, I cut that little nub off. And then this one, we cut the center off. We cut the whole center out of this one. Now, you want to be very careful here. You want to take your time, do this shit right. You don't want to fuck up the edges on these, either one of them, because this is what's going to seal these plates back together. Okay? So, once we get it all JB welded in, um, this is JB Weld quick for this little nub we put on here, so it's going to dry pretty quick. This shit that we have stuck in there is already starting to harden. Um, so this, this is going to be alright to be able to work with right now, same thing with this one. Um, again, when you do this, you stick it in, you really want to pack it in there as hard as you can get it to go, to really get it to seal and then smooth all your edges out. Really drag your edges so they're smooth. Then we're going to, these are the pieces that came off the diaphragm. Those trash them okay now this is how these go together you got this little diaphragm is going to go on this one it fits on into a groove on the back side of that then this one you're going to sit in you want the you see how this one's pushed out you want that pushed out part to go down you don't want it okay you don't want it to feed into the back of that hole at all you just want that hole to be as open as possible so put these gaskets into place and then there you go put it back together so then your fuel line will still be able to slip on even though that little nubby's right there but first thing you want to do for you put all this shit back together is leave it open let it sit overnight let this shit really cure up that way when you go to actually put fuel through it it's going to be just locked on to these parts 
and fuel can't get underneath it and shit. And that gives this JB Weld cap here time to dry too. You don't have to worry about that. So let them dry, put it back together. Now remember, these pieces came out of there. You can throw them away, you can trash them, you can fucking put them in a little, like me, I got a card box. I put shit like this in a card box because shit like this can come in handy for rebuilds on other stuff. So, up to you. Now, you're going to do this. You want to be very fucking vigilant on what you're doing. Be very fucking patient and make sure you do this shit right. Because you don't want to half-ass this shit. And have it fucking not hold going down the fucking road and have fuel start leaking all over your fucking engine and risk your fucking bike catching on fire. So, with that being said, when you do shit like this, any kind of modification like this, you want to have a backup plan um, in case something does happen. Like, let's say one of these seals starts to leak a little bit. Well, fucking... Have a backup plan. Get yourself a secondary pet cock. You know, get one of the cheap ones or something that you can have on hand in case it ever starts leaking. You can swap it out real fast. You know, this this shit can hold for a long time, but if it ain't done right, it can cause you a bunch of bullshit and can, in the end, cost you more money than you fucking want. So, just... Take your fucking time. Do it right. Um, don't fuck up your little diaphragm gaskets here. And use this trick if you're in like a jam and you need to get your shit running and you plan on getting a new gasket. Cool. This is the perfect idea, you know? Or you want to fucking try this idea to see how long it'll fucking work. Fuck, do that too. But, um, you know, do it at your own discretion, you know? Make sure you... <laughs> 